At the beginning of 2019, last year, I asked God for something. I asked Him to grow me in my relationship with Him. And I wanted us to go deeper in the relationship. I wanted to have beautiful memories with the Lord. I wanted to have just such a wonderful time in His company. And the year was filled with highlights. The year was just so awesome. Later on, when I was looking back at the year, I realized that it was not so much the highlights that I liked, it was his company. It was really God. I loved the beauty of having and knowing that he was there. When I go out with my friends to have dinner, I loved knowing that God was with us. When I go to church, I loved knowing that God was present. When I have deep conversations with my friends, I loved to know just that he was there. So I did what anyone would have done. I asked for more of him, even more this year. Now, sometimes when we ask things from God, you know that what you're asking is risky, especially when we're asking for more of him and just out of what I've seen and what I've felt and what I've experienced, I know that every time I've asked for more of God, I've had to let go of so many things. But I asked. I knew it was going to take a lot of faith. I knew it was going to cost me a lot. I knew that I would have to let go of some things that some of them dear to me. But I knew that every space that was left with the things that I would have to let go, God would fill that space. Now I know this year has been really tough for many, myself included, but I want to invite you into this journey of looking back. In the Bible, there's this really cool story of Joshua and the children of Israel. Moses is dead and now Joshua has to take over the children of Israel are not so sure whether Joshua is going to be the same amazing leader as Moses was. But then the very first thing, they're faced with a challenge. They have to go across the River Jordan. So God does this. God performs this amazing miracle, splits the sea, and the children of Israel cross the river to the other side. Now the story doesn't stop there. But what comes after is the part that I really like. They build a memorial. They're instructed by the Lord to put together 12 stones, each representing a tribe of Israel. And this memorial is going to serve as a testimony for the upcoming generations. This year has been something like what Joshua went through. It's been rough. I mean, it's like every corner of our lives have been disturbed. But you know what? We are still here. We're still here. We have made it this far. We have grown. We faced numerous challenges that have sharpened us. And trust me, we're coming out of this year as different people. At the end of it all, I realized that strangely, I really needed God to come into the areas of my life that have been disturbed because he planted new things. He has equipped us with wisdom and knowledge that only he can give, and he has yet proven himself faithful. So just like Joshua and the Israelites, I want to build a memorial right here on this channel as I look back at what God has done for us this year. I entered this year grieving the loss of my father. Then we land into the country from the burial and shortly after a lockdown. This was a really tough time for me. We were just landing back in the United States from Kenya after the burial. And then shortly after a lockdown, this was my last semester in university and I was still having a hard time getting back to normal. I had the previous semester's work to catch up on and the present semester's work to catch up on. 
And then lockdown, there were no friends around. I had to do it by myself. Now, I did what I knew to do best. I called upon the Lord and the Lord responded with the story of Elijah. On my channel, you'll see that my first video this year was called How to Pray During Lockdown. The Lord showed me the story of Elijah. Elijah is facing a difficult circumstance. He is in the middle of nowhere. He's so afraid because this, there are people who want to kill him. He's performed this huge miracle and now he's running away. The voice of God appears to Elijah and God says, Elijah, what are you doing here? Now, before this happens, before he hears the voice of God, there was a lot of noise. There was a wind, there was a fire, there was an earthquake. And the word of God says, but God was not in any of those. Today's society is surrounded with so much noise. Everyone has an opinion, complaint, comment on everything. We pop on social media and there's all these thoughts and comments from everyone. It's hard to hear God through the noise. How then can we hear the voice of the shepherd when we're listening to the noise? There is strength in privacy and silence. You see in Isaiah chapter 30 verse 15, the word of God says, in returning and rest shall be your strength. In quietness and trust, you shall be saved. The practice of being still is something that we have lost, yet it is the very stillness, in this very stillness, that we experience God's love and receive the blessed assurance that He actually is with us and for us, and nothing can change that. When I'm sure that God is on my side, there's absolutely nothing I cannot do. And that's what this season has been about for me. Being silent, remaining quiet, and seeking the Lord. During my father's um, burial season, I found myself in this strange place and I asked God so many questions. I felt like I had come to this place where I had to decide whether I wanted my will to happen or God's will. I remember taking off after I had just received the news and taking a walk. And I came to this place in the park and I was walking and I was praying to God and saying, God, I need you to help me because I have this much hope left. I feel like it's so easy for me to give up at this point because everything feels so hard. I have this much hope and I feel like I'm losing it. And the Lord responded with Romans 5. Hold on to hope. The Lord showed me that hope is a trustworthy anchor for my soul. And God himself never lies. And so he is the most reliable being we can ever have. If I let go that little hope that I had, no matter how little it was, no matter how close to the edge I was, I would literally be letting go of an anchor for my soul. And this anchor gives us access to the inner sanctuary of God, where I could access all the help I needed. So I'd be letting go of access that was far more precious than the emotions I felt at that time. You see, hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. And the Lord said, if I could just hold on to that hope, I would never be disappointed. So I held on. The reality of lockdown <laughs> hit me when I realized that after all these years of looking forward to a graduation, my graduation was going to be online. 
you realize that people play a huge role in your life, even without necessarily having a relationship with them. But life changed so suddenly, I couldn't just walk into the student's lounge and ask my friends to help me with my assignments. I had to do it all by myself. I missed... I miss even just the crowds on the hallways and how we would just randomly walk to the cafeteria and find and I would find my friends there. You really don't realize how blessed you are to have people around you until you don't have those privileges anymore. But now it's just us. It's just been us. It's been us with our families, some of us living alone in our houses. But still, we were not alone. You see, quarantine has been like God calling us into the ark. You and I have not been alone in our houses. We have not been alone. He said, come into the secret place. Come into this place where you and I can make memories, where I can change your heart and you can begin to see a difference. I began to see over and over scripture and sermons that all said the same things. God was calling us to himself. And when you're in the presence of the Lord himself, <laughs> something has to change. Isaiah the prophet himself said that he saw the Lord and his response was, Woe to me, a man of unclean hands. For I am unclean and I live among wicked people. That is what happens when we're in the presence of the Lord. Just think about it. Coming into this year, quarantine, lockdown, having to stay home, we have not been alone. God has been calling us into his secret place. And in his presence, we have been able to see that we really are people of unclean hands. We really are people who are in need of the Lord himself. You can never be the same when you see God. Something about his presence changes us. I've changed a lot this year. I think my faith in God has grown. I think I have seen the hand of the Lord. And I'm sure that there's a lot of us who has that same testimony and it's not like i've seen supernatural things signs and wonders it's not been like that that's not my story but what i have seen is i have seen the lord holding my hand walking with me through the fire taking me through those moments when i was lonely and sad taking me through those difficult times when i felt like i just need somebody we have felt his presence more this year in our personal spaces, in our individual homes. We've seen the face of the Lord in our children, in our families, in our spouses. I've learned and I still am learning to cultivate an appetite for the things of God. I've learned to get used to the presence of God. See, before I knew the Lord. I found Christian music so boring, especially hymns. But now I absolutely love them. Not because they've changed, but because I now understand what they talk about. I have walked with the Lord. I have sat with Him. I've had interesting conversations with Him. And now I know exactly what music what, so what songs are talking about. I've learned to delight myself in God and to genuinely enjoy his presence and his company. Matter of fact, I even decided to do a video about it. <laughs> it's called An Appetite for the Word of God. We must learn how to form the habit of loving the presence of God with spending time in the presence of the Lord, what's been happening is that we have begun to have an appetite for the presence of the Lord. We have begun to desire the presence of the Lord. Now, 
an appetite for the word of God, for his presence, for his company, it's not something that comes to us naturally. It's something we have to be intentional about, to cultivate. It's like forming a new habit, except this habit <laughs> is one that will actually satisfy your soul, even though it costs you. Following God is a narrow path. I know for me, I would say that I have lost so much following Christ, <laughs> but I have gained far more than I lost. I struggled a lot with letting go of things and people, especially in my early days as a Christian. I generally hate to say goodbye and sometimes I even overstay places just to avoid that feeling of having to leave and or even carry things and people into seasons and places where they don't belong. But in the presence of the Lord, we must let go of some things. Take an example of Abraham. God told him, Abraham, I want you to leave your people, your father's, your father's house and your relatives and come with me to a place that I'm going to reveal to you later. A step of faith, <laughs> actually a bold step of faith. And so they come to this place where they've settled in a land and the land is too small for both Lot's people and Abraham's people. There's strife. The people begin to fight each other. Now, when the Bible says there was strife, <laughs> It only tells us that there was something that Abraham needed to pay attention to. So Abraham responds by going to the presence of the Lord. He prays and God tells him, separate, separate from Lot. The funny thing is that immediately the two separate, Abraham finally receives the promise. In life, we'll have many moments like that <laughs> where things are just not smooth. There'll be strife in some areas which will call for separation. In the presence of the Lord, we will have to separate from things, from people. We just can't carry some things to the next level. Ravi Zacharias tells this amazing story of cyclists. So bikers, they're riding bicycles. And at the beginning of the race, they had backpacks and they had water bottles in the backpacks full of water. And he observed that at a specific place during the race, each biker would do the same thing. They would reach to their backpacks and take everything that weighed them down. In that very place, they could see the end of the race right before them. And so they took bottles, threw them out, anything that would weigh them. That's the same thing we need to do. That if we set our minds to the end of this journey, to eternity, we must remove anything that is weighing us down. Anything that is keeping us from running this race in full course, in full force. Sometimes separation is necessary so that we can reach where God wants to take us and see the way before us. I've really asked myself hard questions in this season. Do I really love God? What is the gospel? What do I want to do with my life? What's the most important thing I should do at this point of my life? Think about it. During this pandemic, we could really die at any point. <laughs> but by God's grace, we have made it this far. Jesus asked Peter, Peter, do you love me? And Peter was so sure. And he told him, you know, I love you. He asked him again and again. And Peter said, yeah, I do love you, Jesus. Yet this very same Peter was the person who was first to deny Jesus. 
at the face of adversity. I'm just like Peter. I am weak. Sometimes I could say, Lord, I really love you. And then the next moment, I act like I don't know my shepherd, like sheep without a shepherd. This year has shown us how weak we are, how we are really not in control, how this whole earth is the Lord's food stool, how he is sovereign over all. And no matter what, he has still kept us and embraced us and how broken we are. And he is still pursuing us even now. I think looking back, <laughs> I'm actually grateful for all that I have lost because wherever something left in my life, God filled that space and oh, what joy it is to be close to the Lord. In Him is everything we need. Maybe that's what this pandemic has taught us, that our delight really comes from God that everything we enjoy in this life, whether family or travel or good food and music, is really a gift from Him. And we have learned that we're not humans who are depraved of love, but there's love at home. We have learned that we may have everything today and lose it all tomorrow, just like that, but we can hold on to God. He is a sure anchor. God is not a God who tries to hide himself and remain mysterious. He's a God who is revealing himself. He wants to be known and to be known by us. The Lord has been revealing himself on this channel all throughout the year. And I'm so grateful for all of you who have been liking, commenting, subscribing, and watching these videos consistently. Now I know and I'm hopeful that he will continue to be faithful and he will continue to speak on this platform next year and the years to come that his name may be glorified, that his name may be lifted and known all over the earth. If this is your first time watching, welcome. On this channel, we share testimonies, the word of God and godly inspiration. Remember to subscribe, tell a friend to tell a friend and Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays.